All right, I want to give you a, a quick tour of our Jupiter Hub setup. The URL for this is Jupiter dot uh, symbiotic dash computing dot org. Uh, there's also a link from the main course website uh, to uh, to this. Um, you'll see this page uh, first. Uh, click on sign in with CI login. So this is a generic uh, login authentication system. And apparently we wait. Um, this this will present you with a variety of different uh, resources to that you can use to authenticate yourself. Uh, in your particular case, what you're going to do is select University of Oklahoma amongst this very long uh, list and uh, and then log in. And what you'll generally see is a uh, a web page presented by OU, which uh, which is our single sign on page. In my case, OU already knows about me, so it skipped that step. Um, but uh, go ahead and enter your OU credentials, and then you're presented with with this page here. Um, we're going to be using this semester this Scikit-Learn uh, stack. So uh, select it and click on start. And at this point, we're going to uh, fire up the virtual machine just for us. Um, so this, as I said in the previous video, this can take a, a, a bit of time. Hopefully in this case, it will only take a few seconds. Okay, so the virtual machine has uh, now started and uh, it is now starting up the uh, the, the environment here. Um, you can see I already have a, a notebook that I was experimenting a, a little bit in, uh, but let me give you a tour of the interface. Uh, in order to create uh, additional directories or folders, you can uh, use this button here, uh, and that will be created within the uh, directory that, that you are currently working in. This this uh, main directory, this is your home directory that's only visible to you. Um, you can also start uh, a variety of other activities by clicking on the plus button here. Uh, so for example, you can create new notebooks by clicking here, uh, or you can uh, click on here to, uh, to get a proper bash shell terminal. We'll take a look at that here uh, in just a second. Um, what's also nice about Jupyter Lab is that it will tile your different tabs. So we can very easily switch back and forth between uh, these tabs, but you can also drag a tab over and put it into another location. And at this point, now you're able to see uh, two tabs at once. You can even uh, set things up so that you can have uh, two tabs that look at the same file at once. And that's very convenient when you're working on two different parts of the file. It, it's a lot easier to, to, to have these uh, two panels than it is to keep switching back and forth between different parts of the file. Okay, so uh, let's take, let's go ahead and open up a terminal for us. Uh, by default, it's you're in the current working directory. Everyone will have the same uh, home directory. Right now, I don't have a whole lot inside of it. You'll actually see the uh, this uh, notebook file here corresponds to what we saw here, and this untitled uh, untitled folder is just a another uh, directory that we just created a, a moment ago, which has nothing in it. Um, one thing that I did want to point out is that there is a directory uh, that has uh, lots of stuff already populated. Uh, so, so let me shift over to there. Uh, actually, let me so CD in uh, in Bash and and other uh, shells uh, is stands for Change Directory. We're changing directory to MLP, which is Machine Learning Practice. Um, and the slash means that this is uh, from the, the root level of the virtual machine. Um, what you can see is that there are four other directories here, data, 
will contain any of the data that we need for our activities over the course of the semester. We don't have any quite yet, uh, but we'll uh, have that up pretty soon. And then there are also two different homework uh, directories. The homework assignments for this class will be in hw-async. Do not get confused and start doing homework assignments over in uh, this section here. This is for the in-person class. Uh, within skeletons, you can see that there are uh, a, there's a whole set of different directories here. Um, let's go ahead and look at what's inside of module four. Um, and you can see that there are two different uh, notebook files. The IPYND uh, is uh, is your interactive Python notebook. Uh, this is for this corresponds to module four of our uh, of our videos uh, that are available uh, off of uh, YouTube, which you're watching from here. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, these two skeleton files, uh, they're addressed in module four, and they contain a lot of the setup that you that you need. Uh, and then they're designed for you to be able to follow along what I'm doing uh, during the, those videos. So, uh, so you what you can do is uh, you can open those those videos up. You can also, uh, I, sorry, you can open these notebooks up. Um, so a simple thing to do here is say to copy our pandas uh, to our home directory. And and now if if we go back to our home directory, you can see that that pandas file is is right there. And in fact, uh, you can uh, you can see that in the file browser uh, for uh, Jupyter, you can see that, that pandas is there. Double clicking on that, you can see that uh, that notebook gets opened uh, immediately. Uh, so those skeleton files will will be adapted a little bit as as we go. Uh, over the course of the, the semester, I see that there's some stuff here that is actually referring to Google Drives, which we don't have access to here. So keep an eye out for, for those changes. Okay, so one other thing I do want to mention is that I would avoid doing all of the work in your home directory if you need to create uh, other uh, other directories, uh, you can, for example, uh, you could create your own module 04 directory here and say move pandas, save that and close it. Then we, you can move pandas into uh, module four. And now you can see that it's 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 there in module four. So I, I suggest organizing things uh, by modules and by homework assignments. That'll make it a lot easier uh, for you to find things as you go through the course of the semester. Okay, so let me give you a quick tour of our uh, notebooks. Uh, let's, for purposes of this, let's go back to here and we'll create a new notebook. We'll just call that test notebook. Um, the the notebook itself uh, has a Python environment hiding behind it. Um, however, as you type things here, um, so let's set uh, let's set uh, a to five and b to eight, and then we'll print the, those out. Um, just typing the code here in this cell doesn't actually mean that it is has been pushed out to Python. And instead, what you need to do is then execute this. So one possibility uh, is to press on the execute button right here. And uh, at that point, the, uh, the code itself will get pushed out to Python and any printed results will get uh, sent back to you and displayed in the environment here. 
uh, and now now we have another cell um, where we can do other things. So, for example, we can create a new uh, a new variable c, which is the sum of those two. In this case, I executed it uh, not by pressing on the button here, but uh, shift enter will also execute a cell. Okay, so uh, and and one of one of the things that uh, the what the Jupiter will do is that the last thing that displays something uh, or, or returns a value, uh, the last thing in a cell that returns a value, it will that value will get displayed here. Um, however, if I did something like this, uh, a and B both have values, but it's only the last thing C that actually gets returned or printed out. Uh, you can also switch a cell from code to markdown. Markdown is just a, a, a formatting. Uh, it's a formatted text language. So for example, pound means first level header. So you can see that we now have module test uh, at, with uh, very large bold font and uh, the second level uh, text is, is printed with a slightly smaller font. So th this turns out to be really convenient and you'll see this in the examples that we give you uh, uh, to uh, add uh, high level documentation to your notebooks. Uh, something else that you can do that sometimes can be useful is that you can force uh, your underlying Python kernel to be restarted. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what that means is everything that the py Python was doing for you has now been completely forgotten. So now if I ask for what the value of A is, it doesn't actually know uh, what that value is. And what you will have to do is uh, go through and re-execute any cells that that uh, have performed key functions for you. So if I execute uh, this cell up here and then ask what the value of A is, then, then it finally knows what that is. So keep an eye out for that. Generally, we're executing things linearly, but sometimes if you're not careful, you execute things out of order um, you can actually end up with some confusing results. So be careful with that. Okay, so uh, that's that's the key tour of uh, this particular uh, setup. Um, but one thing I want to make sure that you're uh, coming away with is how to shut down your environment. What you do is you go over to uh, File and to the hub control panel. And that will give you an option to stop my server. If you hit my server, you'll go back to your, uh, to your Jupyter lab server, but stop my server will actually stop the virtual machine, free up those resources for other people to use. So don't forget to do that when you're done with your notebooks. All right, if there are any questions, just, just ask on Slack.